Hello again, friends. This is part three of this uh, series uh, of videos concerning the integration and use of this Harris RF2601 antenna coupler and the, uh, the little 1U middle item there, the RF2602 status monitor. And while this whole setup is going to be set up uh, with my Harris RF1140 a uh, transmitter, I am, I, one of my interests in doing this, and one of the reasons I was interested in getting this status monitor, is to try to use the setup with um, transmitters other than the Harris. And so what I've done is I've set up a little uh, experiment using this Sun Air. Um, got a bunch of Sun Airs on the, on the repair queue. Uh, to see if I can get it to work. And um, so I've got a little SWR meter, which is monitoring the standing wave ratio between the uh, Sun Air and, uh, and here. Uh, at the output of this, let me see if I can get around to this side of it. At the output, I have this little makeshift, uh, you know, a high voltage to coax uh, thing I, I made up here. And that in turn goes to a little patch panel, and that in turn goes to, through some RF routing, ultimately to a dummy load. <laughs> uh, it's a long way of saying this is connected to a dummy load. And so uh, I, I think I've got, the, got it working. It was some figuring out to do. But let me, uh, let me get this set up on a tripod, and uh, we'll take the next step. Okay, so... Um, here we've got the Sun Air HF radio. Uh, we've got the status monitor. We've got the SWR and power meter uh, between the radio and the coupler. And the coupler is terminated in a dummy load. Uh, and so it took a little while to figure out how, to, how to, the sequence of events here. And I'll point out, as I showed in the first video or the second video, that there are a series of dip switches in this uh, mount monitor that should be set up to match the, the transceiver or transmitter that it's working with. I have not touched any of that stuff right now. So I suspect that when I, when I do set it up uh, for use with my 1140 amplifier, my 1140 transmitter, that um, these, these functions may end up behaving a little bit differently, but I think that's okay. So let's, uh, let's start it up and, and let's take a look at how it all works. All right, so you can hear the telltale sign of the fans running. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Let me just see if, what, what can be seen here. No, not quite, but over here, I've got a little CW key. Uh, maybe I will stick it up here so that I can uh, generate some RF for the, uh, for the system to try to tune. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have. We have just a uh, random uh, you know, 60 meter frequency uh, I've got 125 watts, uh, which the nice thing about this um, this coupler is you is the tune power is up to I think 280 watts, so you don't even have to try to step down your transmitter to get it to tune uh, in, into tune power range. It'll pretty much tune uh, any bare uh, metal radio that you've got. The only time I really ha you'd have to uh, tone tone it down is with a higher power transmitter, but the Harris that I'll set it up with, it automatically uh, uh, will communicate with the with the coupler and only send the right amount of tune power when requested to do so. So this is is really quite automatic in that respect. All right. So um, now, if I if I key down at this frequency, I have done nothing. Uh, take an eye, watch this SWR. Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. One and a half. Uh, One point five. Let, let's see if we can do any better. So the way to do better is we hit the retune button, then we hit key, and then we initiate some RF. Okay, and immediately, you can see here it went to ready. Uh, and if you look at the SWR now, it's at 1.0, 1, 1.0 to 1, which is a great outcome. So it was able to improve upon 1.5. Another interesting thing about this coupler is many other commercial couplers like, I don't know, MFJ, uh, etc they will consider 1.5 good enough and they won't actually tune, uh, attempt to tune any better than that, which is probably okay. But uh, as you can see, even at a 1.5, uh, 
this was able to uh, tune all the way down to a 1.0. All right, so let's try another frequency now. Let's go to channel two. I don't exactly remember what I have in these channels. Channel two, enter. Okay, 20 meter frequency. Uh, lower side band, let's change it to CW again, just so it's easier to, to do it. Now, this is not automatic in the sense that it will, it will detect the RF and immediately uh, change frequency. Uh, it is expecting a, a re-key. Uh, or a, uh, uh, yeah, essentially a, a re, uh, another key signal from the transmitter, and then it will retune. But let's just see how it works with doing nothing. So uh, I'll, I'll notice that 65 watts, whatever was stored in there. So key down, obviously it's way over. It's like 6 or 10 or something. Very, very high SWR here. We'll take another look at it. All right, very high SWR. So, and you see it has not attempted to do anything. So let's, the, the, what I found is the right sequence of events is to click, hit retune, then hit key. And this is typically, if it was integrated with, with the transmitter, just hitting key would cause everything else to, to, to run. It would key, the, key the, the radio. But in this case, I had to hit key and then hold the key down. And that's it. It was very fast. I don't know if you saw that. But it went to ready. And now at 14 meters, it's 1.0 something to one. Very, very low. Oh, well, that was pretty darn good. Let's try, uh, let's try uh, channel three. I don't know what's in there. Channel three. Uh, okay, another, another 60 meter. Let's just see what that does. Oh, let's change it to CW. Again, 2.8 to, to one. And if we hit retune and key, again, instantly went to ready. And now we're back at to that. Let's see, any other channels of interest here? Channel 04. Ah, here's 21 megahertz. No idea what all that's about. Let's put it in CW mode. Okay, very high, very, very high SWR. You go through a, re a retune. Okay, I hope you can hear, I don't know if you can hear with all the side tone, the CW side tone, produced by the radio, but I hope you could hear the clicking of the relays on the antenna coupler. And sure enough, we got that down literally 1.0 to one. I guess that's not that surprising. We are running into a dummy load, but you know, still the fact that it didn't stop at 1.5 shows one, one key sort of key difference between, uh, you know, uh, commercial couplers and uh, naval, Navy uh, military couplers. Anything else to try here? Channel 05, anything in there? No, nothing in there. Okay. Um, the other thing we could do is we can just put in a random frequency, 18. Let's see. Uh, that's what happens when you don't use the, all your transmitters all the time. 18, 16 megahertz. Again, I'm in, um, I'm on a dummy load, and let's see how that works. Uh, that's not too bad. 1.5 to 1, just natively, and let's initiate... Didn't do great, didn't do great. 1.3, let's try it again, see if we can get any better. Uh, all right, so that's that. I, I will point out that even though I'm running into 50 ohm dummy load, to do that on this coupler, you're supposed to use something called a long wire adapter, RF625. I will have one on its way to me on Monday. So I'll show that in the last, probably final version of this episode, of this, of this, but. Uh, and that has got a, a, a um, 150 picofarad capacitor in series, and it uses that because assuming uh, you, if for use with the dipole, uh, that you, it needs a little extra capacitance for a 50 ohm load at some frequencies. All right, well, you know, that's, that's really it. Um, not much more to show. Uh, channel two, let's go back to that. Oops, change it to CW. Yeah, very good. Very low, very low. Zero SWR. And that's it. So that's it for um, for this part. Uh, I think this is part three now. And I believe the final part four of this series will be once I've completely integrated it in with my Trans Harris transmitter, which you've all seen, hopefully, on the channel. If not, check it out. Thanks for your time.